Hey there, it's Brittany and I am back with the December curated bee box. I haven't even seen what the theme is yet, so I'm gonna flip it over right now. Okay, ooh, Crystal Moon, that sounds interesting. Um, so curated bee box is $20 a month, um, including shipping, and you get everything that's um, listed in the box for that month, as well as a um, finding starter kit and then you can use these codes on their sister site dollarbead.com to order more items from the box um, let's see let's see what's in here I like that they have recyclable packaging and if you want to save 35% um, off your first box at curatedbeebox.com use coupon code TURQST35 at uh, checkout so I'm excited to see what's in this box. First, we have um, 12 millimeter plum jade style glass beads. So these are just purple um, glass beads. We have 10 millimeter brown spray glass beads. Mm, here they are. Interesting. They kind of look like coffee. And they're not um, like uniformly sprayed. I kind of like that. This one looks great. Um, then we have 10 millimeter pink gray duo style glass bead. I really like these. I like the underlying color with um, the cracks and everything all over them. Then we have eight millimeter Dalmatian style, Dal uh, eight millimeter Dalmatian Jasper style glass beads, 16 inch string. I don't know if that's this one because this does not look like Dalmatian Jasper. To me, it looks like faux marble. Dalmatian Jasper is gray and black with spots. So um, I'm guessing either they, they substituted mine or this is what that one's supposed to be. And then we have um, eight millimeter drizzled light copper glass bead. We've gotten these recently, or at least something that was similar to this. I think I used them. They were green and green and copper. Um, then we have six millimeter drizzled charcoal glass bead, 10 and a half inch string. So the same style, but in a different color and a size. Um, Six millimeter drizzled copper glass bead. So this is the same, but one's light and one's just copper. These look like coffee. Six millimeter brown spot marble style glass bead, 10 and a half inch string. I really like these. These are really cool. They reminded me of coffee right when I opened them. Um, and a little bit of like bacterial, <laughs> bacteria in a petri dish. But I really, like if I was a coffee person, which I don't drink coffee, I'd want these beads for sure. I kind of want to buy more. Um, then we have four millimeter plum jade style glass bead, a 16 inch string. Um, we have 12 millimeter beige jasper gemstone beads, seven to eight inch string. These look like the caramel creamer, don't they? Like, I know this is called crystal moon, but I'm getting a coffee five. <laughs> Um, then we have six millimeter black onyx gemstone. Yeah, those are nice. Then um, we have a 24 by 34 millimeter faceted crystal gold metal pendant. And this is really cool. This is really cool. I haven't seen this style pendant before. So it's got um, open sides and it's got little crystals in there. Isn't that really neat? I love this. I, I already have kind of like an idea for a pretty easy necklace with this, but let's see what else we have. And then we have these 16 millimeter gold circle metal bead frames, four frames. These are so cool too. And they're kind of, they're a little heavier, heftier than I thought they would be. These are really neat. I want more of these. I want another one of these. I want mm, all the strands of these. <laughs> I like this box. I like the, the things that they chose this month. Um, I would definitely purchase more of, especially these three things, probably more of these too. So, and then we have gold findings this month. So wire uh, clasps, ear wires, um, jump rings, head pins, crimp beads, and memory wire. All right, I'm gonna look through everything and then we're gonna make a project. 
All right, I think I've decided I wanted to use these beads to make a necklace. I'm gonna use the pendant. Um, maybe we'll make some earrings using some of these gold circles, although I really, I just really like those. Um, I wanted to use these. And um, for my stash, I got out some, these are uh, fire polish beads. And what else did I get out? Um, I got out these. They're like triple hole, but I think we can just do use two, like the outer strands. This one's kind of messed up, but we have two good ones. All right, so I kind of wanted to do like a, a double strand with my focal down here and having these separate our two strands on the sides. And then, like I said, I got out some of these. I also got out these little tiny flower heishis, but I think I'm not gonna use those. And then maybe finish off the back with some, some chain. Here, I have the uh, cord that, or not the cord, the bead stringing wire that came with the, um, set and I'm going to open up my strands. Okay, so I want the spotted um, beads to be on the outside. I'm going to start with putting on um, like three or four and then I'm going to put on one of these bars and then I'm just going to put on Like two of these and then I'm gonna put on a fire polish bead So then the uh, the just brown strand will be on the inside of this, um, pretty much the same. Um, and then we'll hang the pendant from the spotted beads. I'm gonna go ahead and do all that. All right, so we have our um, first strand strung. Um, little word to the wise, be careful with your jump rings. A couple um, that I tried to open, the, from the kit, um, the plating fell or came off. So um, I just, I ended up not using those. If that doesn't bother you, that's fine. But that happened to a couple of mine. Um, I have some wire left over. I am going to um, do, I ended up taking off the two at the top, putting on a um, fire polish and then putting the two back on and then another fire polish. So, um, I am going to, let me think about this. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna start with four up there again, but this, the inside will have a uh, less amount. So the um, inner strand is shorter. where it connects to the chain in the back, it'll look the same, or at the top, I should say. So then I'm gonna come down through the inside of this triple hole bead, like that. So these beads are the same up there, but then on the inside, I'm gonna do less. I'm just going to string in the same pattern, um, but again, less beads and I'll be back. Okay, so when I was stringing, I thought it would be really cute to add one of these bead frames in the middle. So that's what I did. I found some vintage chain, or actually it's a vintage necklace in my stash. And I'm gonna use this um, and on the back of the necklace. Uh, the cool thing is it's already got a clasp on it and all I have to do is, oh no, is it broken? Did I just break it on camera? <laughs> I 
I think it's okay. Um, all I have to do is cut it in half and then attach it to my necklace. So let me do that. Yeah, I might need to replace this clasp down the line, but let's see. Making sure that the entire necklace is laying correctly. So it's between these two links right here. All I'm gonna do is cut this link. Because the back is already finished, all I have to do is to crimp onto these two pieces and we'll be good to go. All right, I'll get the crimp beads out of the findings kit. And I'm still not feeling the best, so I'm just gonna make the necklace today. We're not gonna do any matching jewelry. Maybe at some point I'll get to a, uh, a bracelet to go with this, because it's a very pretty necklace. Um, all right, and then I'm just gonna crimp on to my chain here. And the necklace is reversible, so it doesn't really matter which side the clasp is on. I'm gonna put my clamp on that side though so we don't lose any beads while I'm doing this and I, I just want to pay attention to where I'm crimp or crimping um, the piece together now I'm looking at this and that looks awfully thin oh no we're good I thought it was I thought it was uh, broken but it's not it's not we're good we're good all right, so I'm gonna clamp or crimp the inside first. Just put on a crimp bead. Oh, that crimp bead just landed by my feet. <laughs> and come through my chain and back through my crimp. I don't think this wire will go twice through my little tiny fire polish bead, but I'm going to check just in case. Sometimes you'll be surprised. Oh, pleasantly surprised there. Okay. And then I'll come back through a couple of these beads in a little bit. So I'll take my crimping pliers, making sure that that wire is not crossed. Here we go, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. And you can flat crimp here if that's, oh, I just heard my Cleveland accent come out. You can flat crimp here if that's what you wanna do. But I'm gonna fold it crimp. And turn it 90 degrees and crimp again. There we go. And I will slide up a couple of those beads. I gotta be careful, it's starting to come off the other end. Um, and before, after, I think I'm going to worry about these beads moving down after I get the second piece crimped. So let me get another crimp bead. Oh, and one thing I missed when I was unboxing, these links were in there. They're little crystal links. They're cute. Totally missed them when I was going through everything in the box. All right. So I'm going to put on a crimp bead. And I'm going to make sure that I'm coming around the outside of this piece of wire. So I'm not going to be on this, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be on this side of the wire. I'm going to be over here. And it might be a little bit diff difficult because my wire once was traveling a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just going to make sure that I'm keeping things straight as possible while I'm doing this. All right, coming back down. And again, like I said, I'm going to worry about um, threading those beads through after I get this crimped. Um, I'm going to do the other side off camera, but it will be exactly the same thing. As long as the positioning is okay, you're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna get my crimp 
in the valley there, pull it down, and crimp, turn it sideways, and crimp again. Okay, so this is where I'm going to shove my wires down through some beads to make it look a little bit better, and then I'll trim that, and I'll do the same thing on this side. We've entered dry hand season in Arizona. <laughs> dry everything season. Um, sorry for my hands. All right, and then I'm just going to trim my wire and then move all the beads down. All right, the necklace is finished. I am in love with it. Um, and the cool thing about it is this pendant is held on with a couple jump rings. So if I find a pendant that I want to change it out for later on down the road, I can do that um, or just make it a, an interchangeable necklace. I love that I was able to recycle some old chain. I will probably give it a buff. It looks a little... Um, a little dusty but other than that I am super excited with how this turned out um, let me know what you think maybe someday we'll make some earrings to go with it like I said I'm just not I'm still a little under the weather but <laughs> I love how it turned out the gold with the brown looks really good it looks like a nice like coffee necklace or a nice fall necklace um let me know what you think i hope you enjoyed the tutorial stay tuned for goldie and if you're uh if you're if you'd like to subscribe to curated bead box you can save 35 percent off your first box by using coupon code t-u-r-q-s-t-3-5 at curatedbeadbox.com. I will put all that information in the description box below. Let me know what you think. Have a good day and happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Hi, bud. You sleeping? Mm -hmm. You taking a nap? Yeah. After lunch nap. Must be nice.